Welcome to Unstoppable Podcast with Harry Sardinas, inspiring conversations with influential millionaires, investors, thought leaders, entrepreneurs who are making a massive difference with their innovative products and services and sharing the challenges and wisdom of how they sold their first million. How would you like to make your first million? And today we have George from Boca Raton joining us from United States and expert networking. So George, can you please interview yourself, introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, Harry. Uh, listen, I'm uh, happy to be on your podcast. You. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about what you do and all your guests, and I'm uh, proud to be one of your guests. So, uh, We are yeah, more my, than happy to have you. <laughs> yeah, my background is uh, varied and very diverse. <clears throat> I'm 77 years old, and I've uh, had many, many careers, been involved in uh, uh, corporate worlds. I've been involved in network marketing. I've been involved in direct sales. I've owned my own companies. I've been on uh, in the movies. I, I had my own radio show. Wow! I was a, I was a former flamenco dancer, professional flamenco dancer. Uh, wow! That's hey. He's gonna keep you fit, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. In fact, <clears throat> when I used to dance, people would come up to me and start speaking Spanish, and I'd go, "No habla español." <laughs> I was the only Anglo uh, flamenco dancer in South Florida. So wow, that's fantastic. So Joe, tell us a little bit more. So what happened before you used to work in corporate, and then you decided to have your own business? What happened there? <clears throat> well, actually, I started when I was out of college at General Motors in uh, Warren, Ohio, Packard Electric Division. I worked there as an executive for. Uh, well, I started as an engineer, then I became an executive, and I bought my job out. In 1985, I worked there 18 years. But why, why, why do you have this comfortable corporate career that they pay you a lot of money? Why you decide to drop this out and become an entrepreneur, which is a very risky thing to do? Wow. Well, back in the back in the day, I used to listen to Anthony Robbins and oh, wow. Zig Ziglar, and uh, they 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 planted the seed in my they, head. Oh my goodness, you're wasting your life. <laughs> you know, you're on a treadmill. And so I said, yeah, yeah, what am I doing? I Do I want to retire here, you know, like as an old man and just work at the same place for 30 years? So I decided to go off and, um, and uh, instead of going west, young man, I went south, young man. I moved to Florida and I got wow. involved in um, all kinds of stuff, just anything that uh, interested me and, and could make money. So Josh, so uh, and I'm glad that that um, that you start to listen to these people because at the end of the day, sometimes it could be a little bit uh, devastating. Sometimes you can people out there are hear stories that they've been working in a corporate for 20 years. So they buy a big house, they drive an amazing car, and all of a the sudden they tell them that they're not needed anymore, and now they don't know how to do anything else, right? And and whether you uh, took a different path, you left your corporate career, which is full of comfort and very good money, and you decided to start the adventure journey as an entrepreneur, but uh, uh, as, as it turned around, you have developed a lot of skills. And I got the feeling that it doesn't matter where we drop you. If I take today all your money and everything, and I drop you in Texas, you can become a millionaire again very, very, very soon. So... Uh, how this outcome, uh, how this roller coaster has been experienced after you left your job? It has been fun, or do you have a, some some setbacks along the way? Well, the only thing I can tell you here is that you're right. Being in the corporate world, getting a nice fat paycheck is comfortable. Okay, your right. your nice your your life is on a, like a flat line. Uh, when you get into the entrepreneurial world, it's uh, up and down. It's a roller coaster good and bad and frustrating and, and uh, hard times, good times. Um, the, the problem is, you know, I'll be honest with you, it, it just depends on what kind of personality you have. Um, some people want to be in a comfort zone. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, I'll be honest with you, most people need to stay in a comfort zone. Yeah. It's not healthy. They, they, don't, they don't have the skills, the talent, the attitude, the abilities. Um, So it's kind of dangerous. You got to be careful. If, if you don't, 
if you're if you're not willing to go on that roller coaster, don't do it. You know, stay. Yeah. Uh, it goes stay with your right, personality, right? Yeah, you you got to have the right personality, and then of course, sometimes it depends on your life situation. I mean, if you got a wife and kids, um, you start to risk their lives. Uh, so there's there's a lot of uh, things you got to consider, uh, and I don't think there's any real answer to it. I think it's just mm -hmm. a matter of uh, you got to make a decision. And, and, then, life, uh, right? and then live with live with the effects of it. Be willing to live with what happens. I remember 17 years ago when uh, I, I used to have a girlfriend and and the mom was asking to this girl, I said, but, but what is the security with this guy? I don't think nothing safe about this guy. He has businesses, some of them do well, some of them don't do, not doing well, what's going on? And I was thinking to myself, and I was thinking, well, I don't think there will be security with me ever <laughs> because this is what I love to do, right? I love to create things. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes they are a total disaster. And if I tell you my failures right now, I'm going to depress you. You might start to cry. So better let's don't go there. But this is <laughs> what the life of entrepreneur is about, right? Is uh, yep. to find the fun in the failures. and uh, But let's face it, Josh, yeah? When the payback comes, when when everything works out, right? Like now, for example, you live in where in, in in a place that you want to live, and now you you have your own podcast, and uh, and uh, I can see a lot of happiness and good energy from uh, from how you speak, right? So what 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 happened when everything turned around and actually work out? How is the feeling? Well, put it this way, it never works out. There's always the next you level. Go. When you're an entrepreneur, you'd never quit. Like I'm 77 years old, I'm financially independent. I can just go to the beach every day. I live in Florida, I have the ocean. I can go on cruises. So why you don't you know do what? that? What are you doing talking to me? Go to the seaside, <laughs> travel the world, enjoy life. What are you doing? No, I'll, I'll tell you what, Harry, I work harder than I ever did when I was young. I work 12, 14 hours a day. I love it because the number one thing that I keep in my mind, I want to be productive. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste my time. I, I only got so much time left. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, it seemed like I had lots of time. You know, the world was like, it never ended. Time, time never ended. But now it's like, man, I don't want to waste a day going to the beach and sitting there looking at the clouds. I mean, I want to do something. I want to help somebody, you know, I, not even necessarily make money. I, I want to feel like I'm, I'm, I have a benefit on this earth, you know. And let's talk about that. It's about the cycle of the entrepreneur because we have, I have something similar here, right? That, you know, first when we start in business, we are like, oh, I want to make a million. I want to make my first million. But honestly, when when we actually achieve our first million in, in sense, it's like, you know, It only lasted three days. However, we do a lot of talks, a lot of conferences around the world. And uh, and even here in London, sometimes the people stop me in the metro and say, Harry, this is you. I hit your company, man, and changed my life. Look, I have my business. These are my kids. I say, where? I say, yeah, you don't remember this conference. I was there in the second floor. And I hear what you say. And now I have my business. And look, my family are happy. And they take a picture. And after this happened, I go back home and, you know, the level of fulfillment, the level of happiness that you feel when you when you help someone, when you transform someone's life, uh, sometimes it's better than any money that you can have in, in a bank account. It gives you life, it gives you joy, it can give you health. I think I always said that these things become addictive. Sometimes I don't do it even for them, I'm doing it for me. So the more you have people out there, it's like you get paid 10 times better And it's in a different currency. It's no money. It's a better currency. It's currency of love, appreciation, a lot of things that we that we actually need to be healthy and and alive, right? No, that that's that's right. When you're younger, uh, you're more enamored with, like you said, make a million dollars, drive a fancy car, live in a yeah, big yeah. house. But uh, the other thing I found out, <clears throat> like I made enough money that I'm happy to live my life. My wife and I were retired. But now that I'm older, I realize I wish I'd have made a lot more money. And that's why I'm still working, too, to make more money to help my family. There's so many people in today's world don't have good jobs. They're struggling. The price of homes, inflation, the price of food. You name it. Um, you know, and I say to myself, well, I'm okay. But what about my granddaughter? What oh, about my, my grandkids? 
you know, and I, I do help them, but I wish I'd like to buy them homes. I'd like to put them through college. I'd exactly. like to do even more. Yeah. So well, I have the ability to make, I, I have the ability to make a lot of money. So I say, well, I'm going to make more money so I can help them. Mm -hmm. And you know, let's face it, it has been tough out there if you're an employee, right? This is really oh. the cost of living. You know, I don't know, but I think United States, I got family there in the United States. And, uh, you know, it's the same like here in UK, right? Like the price of food is like double or triple and uh, and rent and everything more expensive. And the salary hasn't going up. So basically it's a huge price of living. So it becomes like for your granddaughter, right? For that generation, they are, they're going to live in a world that is more, uh, that they need to work harder and, and, and have less, right? So Well, well I'll tell you what, the problem though, Harry, is that, Look, when I grew up, I lived in small town, Ohio. There were seven people in a home of 1,500 square feet. We had wow. one bathroom wow. that you could barely fit into. It was like a closet, okay? But we didn't, we were happy. We had, a, we could eat dinner. We had a roof over our head, mm -hmm. but we were happy. But today, that's not enough. Exactly. Everybody wants fancy uh, this, and they want more of this. And uh, I, somebody just told me, listen to this. How much do you think it costs in America to go to a Taylor Swift concert? You know who Taylor Swift is? Hey, I know, I know, I know. Yes. Yeah, How much do you think it costs for a ticket? Huge. How much? Two thousand dollars. Wow. That's man. That's bigger than the Rolling Stone beat us all together. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, back in the days, we used to have people just come into our town to play play music in the park for free. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the whole perspective changed. And, and now, like when you have a kid, like when I was a kid, I had four brothers and sisters. We never went to anything. We didn't have uh, gymnastic class. We didn't take lessons. We didn't we didn't have karate lessons. We, we didn't do anything. Nowadays, if you have a kid, you got to take them to all these classes and all these lessons. A It's lot all of money, cost money. Right? You, you don't have any more money left for anything. No. Because you had to also, there is a birthday of the other kid, and then you had to buy presents and everything. So your life actually is gone because with the salary that, that the, that the normal salary people are going out there, uh, it becomes um, it becomes tough, right? So now, just let's talk about what do you think about network marketing? I think that uh, I did network marketing and for me, it was amazing, right? Not, not that the company said, because the company actually, after a couple of years, closed down, right? But the skills that network marketing um, uh, teach to, to the people, which is basically a, a team building and leadership, right? It's something as an entrepreneur uh, you need in order to move your business forward. So tell us a little bit about your network marketing experience. Do you think that... Um, that uh, regardless that the company fails or not, it's going to be a good idea for people that want to start to entrepreneur journey to join a network marketing company so they can learn some skills, for example, how to sell and how to keep your team motivated and, and leadership skills. What do you think? Well, I, I, don't think, I don't think you can take that. You're right. You learn different skills and uh, team building and recruiting and sales and so forth in network marketing. The only problem is, I don't think you can translate that to other regular business. I think once you learn those skills, they're great if you stay within network marketing. You go from one company to another, but I don't see it translating to starting a business. Uh, maybe you're a landscaping business or you're starting a high tech company. I don't, I'm not really sure those skills apply exactly. They, they benefit to some extent, right? but it's, it's, it's just the whole, they're two different worlds. Mm -hmm. And and even the people even the people involved in it, you deal with them differently. That they're, they're different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because so, now if you're pro, you're on charge of the of the pro, right? So you right, right. Pro. Yeah, you, you have you have people that are more motivated to listen to you because you're going to help them make money. But when you hire people on a job, a lot of times they're not happy because they're not making enough money, and then you got to have employee problems. So it's kind of two it's two different worlds, really. So tell us about your first business. Well, I was a, an engineer at General Motors for 18 years when I got out of college. I was uh, an engineer, then an executive, and I bought my job out in 1985, and I moved to Florida. 
And uh, I've been involved in, oh, put it this way, um, Harry, because I have such a big database, I get pitched three to five times a week from people in network marketing. Every pill, potion, <laughs> lotion. I get um, you're a big guy in that industry, right? <laughs> everybody, everybody wants everybody me to wants join you. their network, you know. But uh, what I found out is, uh, I hate to say this, but most of the networking products that are uh, promoted for health reasons, they, they don't work. They're not really. And the problem is that people that join, they try to talk like they're doctors and they try to convince people to use these products and they talk about it. It changes your mitochondria and it fixes your DNA and it does this and it does that. And they're not really, um, they shouldn't be talking about it from an expert point of view, but, um, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's kind of a crazy world. And the trouble is there's too many really bad companies that are uh, out there now and people are desperate and they're joining anything and everything, whether it's good or not, they don't care. They're just desperate because maybe they can make money, hmm. but you're right. What advice do you have George for the people out there that want to start the, the journey is in, in the network marketing because uh, there are few things that we learn. Uh, we, we didn't been that long in this space, but we learn few things, right? A lot of network marketing, you know, companies, they say, oh, this company is only one year. So you guys are the first movers and this is going to work, right? And we realized that, <laughs> that this is one of the worst things to be the first one because uh, the company, most of them failed, right? It's better off. Than well, well, I, I, have, I kind of have a rule of thumb. I always say the company has to be in business at least two years minimum. Exactly. And have a good track record. Exactly. And I have to know that they're located in a good Like, like when they're offshore, when they're when their home office is in Panama or in Mexico, uh, no. We're looking good, yeah. <laughs> no. and, and, and then when you can't, especially the crypto deals. Oh, God. The, the cryptocurrency deals are now, they're all exploding. They're disappearing. Uh, the, the, I tell people, don't even touch one with crypto. If it has crypto in it, don't do it at all. Stay away. It's, it's like a big red flag. That's dangerous. So the, people need to be the same thing that we, we, you would talk about the medical product, right? People need to be in a network marketing company with a product that they actually can understand, right? If you go right. there to make money and with, with crypto, and uh, I don't think that, you know, to understand crypto is a lot of knowledge and, uh, and a lot of due diligence. And these companies that design to use a very... Um, very complex language, right? And uh, turned out that a few amount of them, they, they are a very well elaborated Ponzi schemes, right? Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, like I said, it's, And when it's, it's gone, very it's dangerous. gone. You lose everything, right? Well, the only thing I tell people is some people are professionals at joining these companies. Get, uh, I, They call it get in and get out. They get in, they make a lot of money, they bring in a lot of people, and then they, then they leave. And they leave all their... They leave, they leave everybody as dead, right? <laughs> so you got to be careful on who's recruiting you to see if they're consistent and, th and they stay with one company, you know? I mean, I have some guys that join every company that comes down the pike. Um, you know, if, if their, head's on, their head's on a swivel, you know? Mm. So, yeah, uh, that. so then, Josh, for the, if the people uh, they want to be in the network marketing business, What advice do you have for them? Well, I, I would just say that, you know, and do your due diligence, you know, do your homework, find out if they got a good track record, if they have a good, um, you know, administrative it's staff. US base, if US base is a good sign, right? Or UK base, because. Yeah, that, that, that ha that's definitely fly, right. right? Yeah, when, fly, when it's in know. China or in some island somewhere, that's, that's scary. Um, But, you know, you, again, you have to do your due diligence. You have to check it out and then make sure the product actually does what it says it does. I mean, you know, I hear all these pills and potions. They cure cancer. They raise the dead. Uh, you know, it's like, really? I mean, come on, man. Like, I'm going to take this pill and I'm not going to be a diabetic anymore. I mean, it, that's not how it works. <laughs> so yeah, people so sell all this stuff and they don't they don't really know if it works or not. Mm. So, Josh, 
Tell us the other business that you that you have been involved, yeah. So as as an entrepreneur, so what was your best? Well, practice? well, you know, I well, number one, I wrote six books. Wow. Uh, on on business and social networking. Yeah, I have I have uh, I've written books. Oh, I like I like the name of this one, Ultimate: How to Become an Ultimate Worker. Wow. Fine. Yeah. So I teach people <clears throat> one of the most important thing in sales is networking. That there's a lot of sales trainers, but there's not a lot of people that teach you how to network, which is almost more important than the sales technique. Because you got to build relationships, you got to have a database, Absolutely. you got to have people that help you to refer people to you. Uh, in fact, if you get a lot of referrals, you don't really need sales and marketing. You just have people refer you business. Yeah. So, so there's a whole trick to that. And if the product is you, good, if the product is good, uh, you don't need sales and marketing because the people will refer you um, more people. You might not make a million, but you you can have a decent living just by having a good quality product and get people to refer you people, right? Well, you know, Harry, you're right about that. Most sales organizations don't use their customers as referrals enough. They don't know how to do it. And one of the reasons is they're afraid to ask their customers for a referral because their customer might bring up some negative things. And what I tell people is if you want to get a lot of referrals, you have to give your customers more than they paid for. So whatever they paid for, overwhelm them, give them more. And if they're happy, then you can ask them for a referral. Yeah. And that's how you do it. Exactly. One of the biggest company in the world, Amazon, right? Uh, while everybody was uh, spending all the money in customer acquisition and trying to bring new clients, Amazon spent the, all the money that they have making sure that the actual clients, right, they have an amazing experience. And if they didn't like the product, you, they can return it fast, no question asked. And um, they were paid, putting all the money in make sure that the client received the problem faster than anybody else. And they were very careful mitigating all these friction points between the, the from when the client buy until the client received the product. And probably now, you know, because Amazon, not because of you actually look at in Google, it's because a friend told you a large percentage of the clients, it goes for referral and this is due um, the excellent approach that they have when it comes to customer and to the products. And I think I agree 100% with you, Josh, that a lot of companies, right, they are they don't want to ask referral to, to the clients, right, because they are concerned that so, it's not <laughs> complaining about the product, but what they don't know, if they can fix this issue that they Client have the concern with, they can make a fortune <laughs> because exactly. all the clients are gonna bring them. You know, when you go and you see a movie, right? You like it. Do you tell all your friends? You will come in, Harry. You won't believe this movie is amazing, right? So, yep. And it's actually cheaper. It's cheaper to to make your product amazing and say what you say, right? Like give them more to your clients than what they pay for. It's actually cheaper because you will save a ton of money in customer acquisition, right? Because everybody will refer everybody to you, right? Well, well, the the, the trouble is the it's the mentality, the mindset. If people would only learn that when they get into the business to start with and practice that, it would be much better. But they don't. Everybody gets into a business and they start going out selling and marketing, selling and marketing, bringing in new customers, and new customers. They strangers and they put in all the money, all the resources and everything to try to bring as much strangers as possible. And, and they they don't pay enough attention to the people that are actually buying the product, right? <laughs> right, and, and also one other thing they, they, they lack, and some companies do this, but not only provide the best product and service and give them more than they paid for, but make a friend out of them. Create a relationship. Yeah. Call up your customer once in a while and just talk to them. Absolutely. Ask them how they're doing. Ask them about their family. Yeah. Uh, send them, uh, you know, the old gift at Christmas. Uh, and do customer appreciation. Uh, send, send, them a, 
send them, instead of sending them an email or something, send them an actual card in the mail and say, hey, thank you for your business or all the little personal things that make them feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah, I think, George, that um, this is a big, uh, a big topic because, like, you know, if you manage to take your clients into fun, there is a, this guy that is a founder of Metrobank. Yeah, we, we met him and his book launched here in London, right? And he has, he has this book, the name is Turn Your Clients Into Funds, right? I think that um, he does different things in the bank. He allows the customer to bring a dog here in UK. Uh, nobody wants, nowhere, nowhere allows anybody to bring the dog to the bank. So this guy allows everybody to bring the dog to the bank. And this guy decided that was stupid, don't open on the weekends the bank. So he decided to open his bank on the weekends, right? And so he's taking a different approach for the client, doing more for the client than anybody else, right? Of course, it's more expensive to, for him because if he opens Saturday and Sunday, it's costing him money, right? To, yeah. But, and if he allows to bring dog to the bank, well, now they need to put water for the dog. We need to clean a little bit more the premises or you, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, it's out of this concept, turn your clients into funds and... Um, his customer acquisition process uh, um, reduce, <laughs> uh, can reduce a lot because, you know, now it's the client who's bringing the client. So, George, what message do you have for entrepreneurs out there that they are in this rat race and all the thing that is important is to hit the numbers? How many new clients we have this month? Uh, how many new clients we're going to have? And with marketing a strategy, we're going to have to have new clients and they are not giving enough ma value to actually the clients that actually are buying and you have relationship with. So what message do you have for these people? Well, I mean, the number one thing is uh, in any business, you know, you got to have your, your plan. You got to plan what it is you're trying to accomplish. You want more customers. You want more sales. You want uh, to treat your customers better, a customer service. Well, one of the big things, again, getting back, just to kind of diverge a little bit, is customer service. How many times can you not get a hold of anybody at a company? There's no way to get in touch with anybody. So, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, yeah, it, it's crazy. Or you get some phone call from somebody that can't speak English. They speak Philippine or, or, or Spanish or they speak Chinese. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, uh, but you got to have your plan. What is your plan? Then you got to have action steps. How are you going to implement your plan with your team, with your with your people, or yourself, what, what are you going to do every day and work your plan and, and uh, whatever that is. So if you're, if you need more sales, you need funding for your business. Um, the, the key is planning, planning and working your plan. Hey, so Josh, what are the five steps that entrepreneurs should be doing out there to achieve the first million? To keep the what? What are the five steps that entrepreneurs should be doing out there to achieve the first million? Oh, uh, well, again, you got to make the plan. You got to do the action steps. And then you have to get help by networking, which is I talk about. You got to go into your database, your family, your friends, your associates, and get them to help you achieve your plan, whatever it is. Get them to understand what your business is. You know, a lot of people, their family doesn't even know what they do. You actually have to sell your family on what you do. If you can't convince your family, your wife, your kids, your grandkids, your aunts and uncles that you have a good business and a good product, how are you going to convince strangers? The hardest job in the world is convincing your family, your friends, that they want to help you with your business. They want to refer business to you. You know that? No, nobody takes the time to do that. For that, George, they need to have a good product, right? Well, they're exactly. So it goes back to having a good product and a good so that service. Would be step number two, yeah? The step number two is to have and, a good product, right? And step, well, step number two is then, you know, you have to create a good marketing plan and a good brand. In today's world, even if you're an individual or a company, you have to have a brand. What what is when people see you or, or or see your you know what is your message? What are you trying to accomplish? And that's important because if people don't understand what even if you have a good product and they don't understand what it does or how what's the benefit of it, mm -hmm. uh, 
just like all the the professional athletes in today's world, Harry, they're all they're no more longer athletes. They're brand. They're a yeah. brand. I agree. Yeah. They do they do advertisements. They're in oh, movies. You sell it, You don't sell it the business. You sell the brand, right? You sell the exactly. The brand is more important today than the business. So step three would be don't 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 sell products, sell a brand, right? The brand and the benefits. Uh -huh. the, what are the benefits of your product if somebody uses it? And what is the brand? You know, which they're kind of they tie together. The brand is is encapsulating the benefits. For example, my brand is the ultimate networker. And my slogan is I connect people, places, and projects. I love it. So when so when you hear oh. that, you know what I do, right? Exactly, directly. Yeah, it says yeah. what it does in the thing. Brilliant. I love it. And so so that's important. And then the next step in today's world is you got to start to learn all about social media, artificial intelligence, and video. Embrace technology, right? They're saying in today's world, more important than messages and text and emails and posters and ads and billboards are videos. Videos talking about your brand and your benefits And then whether you're trying to sell your product or you're trying to raise money for your business, you've got to have good videos, high powered, short clips, short video clips about you, about your company, about your business, about your whatever, different aspects of it. You have to put your voice out there, right? You have to amplify exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Otherwise you gotta, you gotta get you gotta get above the noise. There's all that noise out there. So you have to stand out. You have to get the message out. And then, and then of course, uh, the other thing that's important is you have to get enough money. Most people are underfunded. Most people struggle because they don't have enough resources or the money to do what they want. You made the business work, right? Right. So you're, you're fighting all day to get more sales. But if you sat down and made a plan and decided, what do you need? Better software? You need more employees. You need more social media influencers. That's that's to get to a higher level. You've got to know what resource you need. And that, in most cases, means, in fact, most entrepreneurs their whole life never have enough money. You can never have enough money to do what you want to do and do the best possible job you can and make the most money. So you always have to get money to make money. <laughs> exactly. So, So those are kind of uh, some key elements that that I found over the years that is is the only way to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And also, it's helpful if you get uh, this is kind of going back to networking. You get good mentors that guide you to get to those next levels. Other people that have reached the higher levels and are uh, you know million dollar companies and so forth. You have to get advice as much advice as you can from these people that already made it and what were their obstacles? How did they overcome and, and uh, you know, take care of business, so to speak. So Josh, what made you hear to Anthony Robbins and all these people back in the day? So what happened? Did the friend uh, recommend you those guys? So how your process start to leave the corporate job and, and become an entrepreneur? You said that you start to listen to this, this, uh, Anthony Robbins, and you start to read some certain type of books. But what happened there? Uh, how how you came across this? A friend recommended to you, or you just well, well, actually, uh, well, what one of the things that happened is I got a divorce, and so now I didn't necessarily have to take care of a family and kids the same way. Um, I was I had more free time, so that was kind of like my opportunity. To, I, I, I'm not sure if I would have done it if I wouldn't have got divorced. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I think I would have stayed in that same nice spot. Right. I think so that's maybe, what happened. But, yes, maybe what happened is that, you know, when you have certain responsibilities, you know, like you have to look after the family, the kids, the house, the high standard of living, right? It becomes, and then you are immersed in that environment, right? It's very little time for you to think that you can have another type of life and you can have another, um, that there is something more store for your life than, than what actually you're doing, right? Because 
you're so involved in the day-to-day -day process and becomes busy with kids, family, and everything that you don't have time. You when you go to when you when it's evening time, all you want to do is to sleep, right? That's right. Well, it's like a, again going back to professional athletes. If you notice, uh, the, their their wives basically raise their families because they're always uh, or same thing with musicians or entertainers. They're never home. So most of the time their relationships fail. In fact, I read something the other day that most relationships in the celebrity world last seven years. That's it. Wow. That's the average marriage in, in that environment because they're they're married to their their inter, their job, their entertainment, their, whatever they're doing. And it's the same thing with an entrepreneur. I mean you well, you well, no, in my case, Lily travel with me everywhere I go. <laughs> Well, if, if you're lucky to, well, I'll be honest with you, Harry, my wife and I, I, I married a second time. Mm -hmm. I married a woman that had no kids. Mm -hmm. And the first 12 years, we did everything together. I mean, we, yeah. that, so if you can set that up, that's great. But the problem is when kids come in the picture, it makes it tougher. You still can do that, yeah. but it just makes it tougher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, Lily and I wouldn't have kids, right? And uh, and it's actually is me who had the speaking career and was me who was speaking around the world, right? But Lily decided that she doesn't want to stay at home. So she said, I'll go with you. And uh, because she goes with me, she pick up, she learned really quickly what I was doing. She learned from the best. Some of these big conference, she was there and, you know, people like Les Brown and I'm a lot of great speakers that she had to stay with. Uh, and Lily has been there and eventually she started to speak as well. And now every time we go, people want Harry and Lily. Yeah, last time that we were in Peru, they say, I want Lily 90 minutes and Harry 15 minutes. I'm like, what? I'm the famous here. <laughs> <laughs> so now she she's becomes taking, so she's good taking over now, your spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they say, oh, I said, they say always Harry and Lily, you come together, both of you, and to do the talks and you cover it. So, yeah, I think that, um, but it happened like this, like we don't have kids and every time that we go to, the, I go to Singapore or everywhere, Lily said, no, wait, I'm staying at home, I'm coming with you. And um, and yeah, we, we, we're doing everything together, uh, but uh, it becomes tough, yeah, when you have the kid, because obviously you cannot take the kid with you. Uh, to, well, to well the, the other, life. well, uh, my wife and I, okay, for the first 12 years, we did exactly what you and Lily did. Okay. We were a team. Mm -hmm. We went and did talks together. We were on TV together. We wow. ran the business together. And then in 1991, my wife got pregnant. Oh. Now, what happened was she was happy doing all that before, but there's a shift. When a woman has a child, I don't care what they say before they have the child, it shifts. The, priority because the, 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 nature, the nature of the beast is that the absolutely. woman is now wants to nurture the child. Absolutely. And that, that big world they were in before is not as important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. It make, make more sense, right? <laughs> yep, yep. It's, uh, but, you know, I mean, every woman's different. Uh, I hate to say it, but some women can have a kid and they don't have that feeling. They, they go right back out there and go back to work and hire a nanny. And uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you, but the problem is, you no matter what the woman tells you before, you don't know until it happens how they're going to act. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's, it's all about navigating this and, and make the most out of it, yeah? Well, you just got to make hay while the sun shines. Make, <laughs> make as much as you can. And then uh, if the wife bails out, uh, you you develop uh, you know on your own further. That's all. <laughs> so, but, Josh, what what message do you have for entrepreneurs out there that um, that have been in uh, in your situation? Right, you are in business, and uh, now face you have the family now, uh, and sometimes you you have a lot of goals, but then you know lives happen, and then kids come in the way, and um, so how, how, what message do you have to people that actually um, inspire them that they can have it all? They can have- they Well, well the, the, the real trick, the real, the, the real trick is 
first of all, you got to find a project or a product or service that you, you really love. You know, the old saying about passion, you got to be passionate about it. And then you have to deal with everything around, all the obstacles and problems with kids, family, not enough money. Um, you have to be willing to keep going and going and going. And when things are bad, you got to make adjustments. But the problem with a lot of entrepreneurs is they quit. They quit when the going gets tough. They get to a certain get point where, sure. you know what, this is too hard. I, I can't do it. I'm going to go somewhere safer, do something safer. Or, or they're, they're changing around all the time, doing different things. So you got to stick to it. You got to be passionate. You got to stick to it. You got to figure out a way when you have problems, how to resolve them. Talk to mentors, get coaches, uh, maybe raise more money. Uh, you just got to stick to it. Hmm. And, and my, my favorite phrase is you got to be consistent, persistent, and relentless. Fantastic. So persistent, consistent, and relentless. And with that note, we are going to conclude this podcast of Unstoppable. Thank you so much, just for your valuable time and your valuable expertise. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more, right? If somebody is inspired by your story and they want to become the ultimate networking or networker, where can they find the book and how they can contact you? Tell us a little bit more about it. Okay, this. it's real simple. I, I got two websites. Uh, the first website is, of course, it's called theultimatenetworker.com. That's my brand, right? The, the T H E, ultimatenetworker.com, all I one word. It. And then my other website is simply georgedubeck.com. And that's D U B E C, georgedubeck.com. And what so happened you, when they arrived there? Can they send you a message? They write you an email? What happened when they visit you? Yep. They can, my phone number's on there. They can call me up directly. They can text me. They can email me. I'm open 24-7 for business, Harry. But I can tell. I can tell that you got it. And, you know, Josh, uh, the other day um, there is a, a, a company, right, close to our house that they have a lot of taxi drivers, right? They are all in the late 70s. And uh, and um, I take a lot of taxis, and I was talking with the one guy once, one of the taxi drivers, and was telling me, uh, 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 he's telling me that he has a house in Spain and everything. And I'm like, man, why are you still driving this car? Why you don't go on holiday and rest? And he told me, Harry, listen to me carefully. Yeah, the last guy that retired from the taxi driver <laughs> place died after one year so no way that <laughs> I'm gonna keep working until I die he said right <laughs> so I'm so happy that you are switch on and you know the more you work uh, and the more you try to help people out there more positive things gonna happen to you you're gonna be more healthy you're gonna be more happy and you're gonna keep making more money so you can buy houses for the, for your granddaughter for your grandchildren how amazing with that you know have a grandpa that give me a house, you know, so I don't have to worry about that anymore, which is a very, you can, you can provide a very, very tough, a very uh, beautiful life for them, right? You got that right. All right. Well, Harry, hey, listen, it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, sure. And I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Follow us for more interviews with world's most influential, audacious entrepreneurs that overcame challenges and adversity providing you with the blueprint of how they sold their first million so you can grow your business exponentially.